What's going on Neon Nation? Welcome back to the Neon Arcade for my Gangs of Night City Ultimate Analysis video. If you guys have watched Ultimate Analysis videos before, you'll know what to expect. So kick back, grab a drink or a snack, and let's dive right in. As the Gangs of Night City trailer opens up, we're greeted with a familiar scene from a junkyard reminiscent of the one V wakes up in after he's been shot by Dexter Deshawn from the 2019 CGI trailer. In the background, we have Night City shrouded in a mixture of fog and pollution as an orbital air shuttle sets off presumably for LEO. Sky High ads are also present in this shot. Rotating to another locale in the Badlands, we have what appears to be the oil fields in the northern region with a quaint nomad trailer hut in the distance. We do see oil fields quite often in this trailer, mainly in the nomad section. Our first shot of the city is likely in the district of Haywood. On the bottom right, we can see this is likely Valentino's territory based on this gang logo for the Valentinos with the skull hands and the V. The vehicle closest to us on the right hand side is made by Thornton who typically specialize in more off-road type vehicles, popular with nomads and you can also see clothing vendors here with jackets, vests and shirts on some hangers. You will likely be able to buy different clothing options via these vendors and CDPR has made it so that clothing options have armor slots. This means that you can find the coolest looking jacket and upgrade it to your liking instead of being tied to the gear with built in superior stats that you might find just outright ugly. As the camera rotates we see a new ad for Kang Tao for what appears to be a smart pistol. It is kind of hard to make out what it is, but the Kang Tao logo is apparent on the bottom right. Finally, we have some graffiti on the left hand side spelling out the name of legendary Haywood fixer Padre. His graffiti is all over Haywood and he is highly respected in the area. Moving on to the next shot, we have a bar on the left hand side called the Pinche Pollo, which means the effing chicken, as well as a smaller restaurant called Hamra Cuisine. Next to the Hamra sign, we have an ad for Arasaka and their advanced soldier systems. Arasaka is one of the biggest and most prolific mega corporations in Night City and have their hands in a variety of industries, although mainly in the security sector. The Valentinos have a ton of Santa Muerte murals in Haywood, which is the Mexican deity of death, which can be seen here. Moving into the more populated areas of Night City, we first have this segment that might look familiar if you've been watching my analysis videos prior to this. We have mentioned this 24-7 store in Kandachi outlet multiple times and we see it briefly when looking out the window of V's apartment in the postcards trailer. Because V lives in a mega building, it's safe to assume that this is where V lives, which will give you a better feel for the surroundings and locations that we've mentioned before. There is a variant of the storage ad we can see in the 2077 lore book, as well as a big sign for AI taxi service Delamain right next to it. This is our first glimpse of an aerosep so deep into the city, as previously we've only seen them in the outskirts or an open air space near the city center. Moving down in the same area, we have a shot of Takamura. He does seem to be a friendly ally to the player, at least during this moment in the game, and he likely also opposes Arasaka. He has a connection to Oda, who is Hanako Arasaka's bodyguard, and did seem to be his higher up at one point, or even still is. 33 seconds into the trailer and we're likely back in Haywood, judging by the fact that we have the Pinche Pollo in the background yet again. This back alley does seem to have a fair amount of traffic flowing through it, and there is what appears to be the homeless on mattresses and chairs to the left. We also have one of those swirly signs that are outside modern day barbershops and although this is a bit of a stretch, maybe we can change up our hairstyles here if this is the case. Valentinos have a lot of murals and not just for Santa Muerte, they also have them for modern day activists who fight against oppression, the NCPD and the corporations. If you remember from the Life Path trailer, we had this mural of a Valentinos member who protected a woman against a corpo based on the Spanish translation. This one in the back seems to be similar in this sense. As we start getting into the particular gangs, we have our first look at what could be the in-game map in the menu. Philip Weber has mentioned that our personal map is 3D and top-down, so this seems to fit the bill. It is a bit odd that the orbital air facility is not in this particular shot, but seeing how far the roadways stretch in the Badlands is quite nice. In our first action sequence of the trailer, we have a familiar scene if you've watched the 48 minute demo. This is the updated look to the scavenger shootout with the addition of 2077's amazing rain effects which really give a dark Blade Runner vibe to the city. We are using the low tier Dara hand cannon seen most notably in the Nomad Life Path footage and the name of the intersecting road here named Crescent Street. CDPR has named each and every street which I'm sure we'll appreciate when traversing this megalopolis. Again another familiar scene heading into the scavs lair where we rescue Sandra Dorset in the 2018 demo. Really not too many changes here other than the fact that the male on top is now wearing boxers. The first gang we're introduced to is the Maelstrom. They look pretty similar to their look from the past, although they do seem to have broken out of the purely black leather jackets for some more unique clothing options. Midsection augmentations seem to be more popular with the Maelstrom, 
and the one in the middle has a radio that we've seen V use in the Badlands. Departing from the completely augmented face look, the Maelstromer in the next shot has an all black mask that honestly looks similar to some of the helmets from high tiered Arasaka security. We will see later on that the Maelstrom steals from Militech and they do wear Arasaka gear so there might be some alliances that have formed in Night City post unification war. We also see a sawed off shotgun which hasn't been shown off in any gameplay footage so far. Moving on we have fan favorite Dum Dum blocking an entrance with some of his Maelstrom homies as they smoke some cigarettes. This does look like it's in the all foods plan and take a look at the detail on the dents of the doors. Deeper into their lair we have a familiar location, the same route we take to get to the spider bot from before. Check out the lighting differences here as well as the NCPD ad that we see in the world of cyberpunk lorebook. In our next scene we have our first look at famous bar and romping grounds of the maelstrom, the Toten Tans. This is one of the most violent bars in Night City and the higher the body count, the better the night for the gangoons who choose to frequent this location. On the right hand side we see some thermal clothing or suits that we can see a bit better on later as well as this dancer in the front going crazy. She seems to be wearing a wireless brain dance wreath or headset and the maelstrom are rumored to be creating XPDs or illicit brain dances so it seems likely that this is what she's experiencing. 51 seconds in we have the updated scene where we are interrogated by Royce, leader of the maelstrom. Looking at his pistol more closely it seems like Royce is wielding the chaos pistol which is the iconic weapon exclusive to him. Some of the bigger bosses and NPCs in Night City will also have their own iconic weapons which are a tier above the legendary ones. This chaos pistol has a sleek red coat of paint as well as some maelstrom branding on it. Just going back to my point made earlier, Dum Dum does have an Arasaka vest in this particular scene again giving more weight to the theory that maelstrom is aligning with Arasaka and doing dirty deeds for them. Moving into some of the gameplay we have a genesis rifle and arm firing off some rounds from the hip into these two maelstromers. I'm not sure if this has RTX on or not or the maelstrom janitor just made his rounds but nevertheless you gotta love the shine to the floors. There is an ad for Mega Packs exports on the top indicating that we can buy cigarettes. We can already eat, drink and take drugs and we've already seen examples of the player smoking so it does seem likely that we can do this. There is a ton of blood as we finish the second enemy so if you're worried about the lack of blood in prior gameplays it does seem like they've upped the gore significantly since 2019. In our next scene we're back at the Totentans following Dum Dum down some steps. This may be prior to meeting Royce in a divergent story path or we've retained a friendly relationship with the Maelstrom and they're showing us their idea of a good time. Next up we have a couple scenes that I wanted to put right next to the ones that we've seen before to really show how the aesthetic of the game has changed over time. The lighting and the increased minutia at least detail wise is pretty significant here. Next up we have this high power DMR. Take a look at the design of this weapon and it does seem to be the anti-Borg weapon that is wielded by the Max Tac agent from the postcards from Night City trailer. In any case we have two different variants here, one with the scope and one without. At 1 minute and 4 seconds into the trailer we have Jackie getting off a brand new bike we have yet to see before. This is the same location outside the all foods plant that we come to after our meeting with corporate agent Meredith Stout. Take a look at the city in the background versus the 48 minute demo. This is an absolutely massive overhaul and makes what was once the impressive 48 minute demo look like some sort of early alpha. The entrance is also somewhat different but man that skyline is 100 times more impressive now than it was before. On to our next gang the Valentinos who are all about gold, crosses, roses and community. In the first sequence we have a Valentinos member with a reinforced joint augmentation graffitiing a skull and roses on this garage door. His tattoo might look familiar to some and it can be seen more clearly in the Dark Horse lore book. He's got his shades on backwards which is a nice little touch. We also have this group of three Valentinos that we've seen before in the Life Path trailer just hanging out in a back alley. In the back you can see an ad for a football game more prominently seen in Pacifica outside of the stadium. This is between the Corsairs and another team off screen and might mean that sports may play a part in a side activity or two. Again we see a group of three Valentinos congregated and they might actually be the same ones but this time we get to see one sitting on the stairs with some interesting pants. They have the animals logo on it possibly hinting at either this being taken from the juice head faction or that they're in fact allies. In the back you can see a man with a chrome trench coat just an example of Night City's boisterous fashion options. Moving inside into El Coyote Coho we have this Valentino's higher up hanging out drinking some tequila which has been shown in props alongside Johnny Silverhand's guitar in a prior E3 booth. A bunch of Valentinos do have crosses on their foreheads which I think stylistically looks great and really showcases their devotion to their faith. We have a poster in the back that we have seen before called Electronic Murderer, A Feast for the Eyes which seems to be a more traditional movie and not a brain dance and we also have a Moon Explorer sticker, a nod to Orbital Air. 
Although we likely won't be going to space in the main game, I know the Crystal Palace in low Earth orbit would be a pretty popular expansion option. In the next couple of scenes, we're shown a bar shootout as a player uses a pistol dishing out some thermal damage onto this charging Valentino. More graffiti of prolific Valentino's members are present, including the exact one seen in the Life Path trailer we previously showed. At 1.23, we have a Valentino sitting on an Archer vehicle. He has some deep scarring on his arms and there are six street stickers on the hood. That in combination with the man putting his arms up in the back might indicate that they've just robbed the 6th Street member. The Valentinos and the 6th Street are not on friendly terms and are rivals in Haywood and across Night City. Moving on, we have a potentially religious congregation of high-ranking Valentinos. Padre, a well-respected fixer in Haywood, is at the front, and we see our buddy who we saw earlier off to the left. As you can see here, Valentinos love their gold augmentations. Next, we have a scene where V meets Padre that we first saw in the Life Path trailer. Across from our vehicle, there is a 6th Street Archer car judging by the logo and the flag, attempting what seems like a drive-by shooting. Looking more closely at the facial augmentations this 6th Streeter has, it is likely this dude from a prior trailer. At 126, it seems like we've ruffled some feathers with the Valentinos as these two members attack. I honestly don't know why I love this scene so much, and although it does look a bit awkward with the player not moving too much to avoid the stabbing, probably just for the sake of the trailer, it does strike me as an example of how visceral hand-to-hand -hand combat can get. This dude has also got Can You Smell What The Rock Is Cooking Face going on, and I'm all about it. A custom gold Villafort six-wheeler is showing off, and there are some gangsters having an impromptu party off to the right. The woman on the right is likely the woman from the intro cinematic, and on the car itself it says Somos La Muerte, meaning we are death. The cowboy Valentino is shown off in the next scene, next to two other women. The woman on the left does have some very vibrant eyes, almost similar to something you'd see with the maelstrom. Next up, we have the Tino's rival, 6th Street, a gang of corporate war veterans. Again, we see a similar Archer vehicle with the 6th Street branding on the side. This is likely in Santo Domingo, and as you can see from this district, it's more on the fringe of the city away from the mega buildings and features more modern day cookie cutter housing. If we zoom in on the background, you can see our first look at a kid in this trailer. We will also see children during the Voodoo Boys segment. In our next scene, we have a section of Rancho Coronado, which is an homage to GTA's Grove Street. The van on the right hand side is made by Villafort. Scavs have a presence in all of Night City and one can be seen kicking this man while he's down. These two men have the typical hat and tracksuits that the Russian scavs can be seen wearing in other gameplay material. Onwards we go where we see some more 6th streeters lounging on a car decked out in some Militech gear. The man on the left has a curious looking sidearm which does look like it fits the bill of the budget arm slot omatic disposable pistol. We have an NCART terminal in the background meaning that the monorail does stretch out to the outskirts, although we as a player will not be able to ride it. More gameplay is shown off, this time wielding the industrial hammer that we've seen Animal's gang leader Sasquatch use. You will need a certain strength stat to pick this up, and it does seem like you have pissed off this particular group as the whole neighborhood seems to be shooting at you. There's also an interconnected web of rooftops that looks like some futuristic tailgate party, as well as a brainwash sign on the bottom left, as well as a fast travel terminal. Looking over to the right, we have the same downed ferris wheel that we've seen a couple times in the postcards trailer, again giving you some spatial awareness on some of these locations. At 148, we have a look at the Petrochem Dam in the back, which is the same location as seen in this concept art, and further back from this shot from Grove Street. We have highly militaristic gear on the 6th Street, and the female on the right is drinking a type of beer that we see a bit later on in the trailer on a keg in the Lizzie's Bar. The trailer cuts to a more open area of Santo Domingo as we're attacked by this woman with a wrench. We have seen her before protecting this older veteran in some screenshots that we will see later on in this trailer. Back to the rooftops and we see the two females we saw earlier as well as a man wearing a Kara Uridine t-shirt. Oddly enough, the woman attacking us from before with the wrench is now offering us some Bolshevik vodka. If you visited the Night City Love lore website, you'll see an ad for Bolshevik vodka with the catch line, so strong it glows. Weldon Holt doesn't seem to be a popular mayoral candidate amongst the 6th Street as they have you fire a modded Dara pistol on targets with his face. You can see 666 Street graffiti up top where the presumed leader of the 6th Street is hanging out. 6th Street members also seem to have this same tattoo with this female member choosing to place it on her leg versus the intro cinematic with members who have it on their arms. During the final sequences of the 6th Street section we have a fairly sexual ad with this tagline which means show yourself in German, as well as two pretty awesome sports bikes and the aftermath of a shootout between the NCPD and the gang. The NCPD armored SUV is by Chevalon and there is a machete on the ground that we have seen the Maelstrom use before. As we enter the Voodoo Boys section, we have a brief segment with Judy Alvarez. On her table, we have Roche Bartmoss's Guide to the Net with a special Neuromancer cover. 
This is a Cyberpunk 2020 sourcebook by Artal Sorian, the company who has written the source material of 2077. At 204, we have what at first looks like the net, but is actually more likely a brain dance. There is a yellow tinge here, and later on we see Brigitte and Evelyn Parker stranded in time, indicating that we're using the brain dance editor to look for clues. Check out Netwatch agent Bryce Mosley side by side with his 2019 model. I think the updated visuals here look really great. There's not a ton to say about these scenes that we haven't said in my 30 minute deep dive analysis, but I will side by side the next couple of scenes to illustrate how they've improved over time. Picking it up at 2 minutes and 18 seconds in, we have Placide typing on a computer. His jacket appears to be from Gibson Battle Gear, one of the best armor and clothing manufacturers from the cyberpunk lore. We're also shown an open air market or alleyway in Pacifica near the landing where we follow Placide in 2019, with the slogan I'll knock the devil out of you, this seems like it could be some sort of televangelist. A Mahir Motors Scooby Doo Mobile is shown off with two Voodoo Boys goons guarding it. Again, we see the same SMGs we've seen in some of the more recent trailers. We do have a couple more scenes to round off the Voodoo Boys section, so I'm just going to side by side them again with the same locations from 2019's Deep Dive. Moving on, we have Juicehead Jimbro Gang The Animals. In the intro into the gang, we have some more Gibson Battle Gear with the head augmentations on the female animal on the far right. Getting right into the gameplay, you can see that the animals like to swarm in packs, and between the gym attire and blazers, they seem to be more diversely dressed as well. As we reload the Genesis rifle, we see that there is a component to it made by Nakoda, showing off the modularity of the weapon and the potential for mixing and matching. At 242, we find ourselves in a fistfight with a hyper-aggressive boxer who looks like he's been abusing the steroid known as Juice. The effects are increased strength and a blue glow to the veins and eyes. Check out the sweat that flies off of him as you land a punch, which again gives hand-to-hand -hand combat a much more visceral feeling. Moving on, we have an animal's warehouse or fight club with some superbikes parked outside. Inside, there is a small intimate pit for training and even likely death fights, judging by the barbed wires behind. This is the human equivalent to cockfighting, and I'm sure people place bets on who will win and who will die. In the lore, I believe there was fighting rings for exotics, so this might be 2077 spin on this. The trailer shows off a couple more animals members, an updated Sasquatch battle, as well as some animals enjoying a cheat meal inside what is likely the Grand Imperial Mall. Moving on, we have the updated look to the scene at the end of the 48 minute demo, where we meet up with Meredith Stout. Again, I'm going to side by side this for you guys so you can see the changes. The Militech bodyguards do look substantially more imposing versus the one seen in 2018, which is a nice design shift. The trailer veers to yet another shot of the Night City skyline, where we see a couple new Arasaka ads for security and environmental protection. Moving on, we have one of my personal favorite gangs so far, the Tiger Claws. At 305, we have Wakako Okada, the woman who gives you a mission briefing during the Tools of Destruction weapon trailer. On the paper in front of her, we can see a headline that says Cargo Carnage, which might mean there has been some conflict on a cargo zeppelin or in a shipping facility in Night City. For an old lady, she does seem to be making some very bold fashion choices. At 307, we have some Claws members attacking the player in a familiar location. Slowing down this moment from the gig trailer, we can see that this is likely the same bed and background during that scene. Moving into a scenic vantage point in Japantown, we have a red outline on the left, meaning that V has scanned this NPC with his Kiroshi scan. He does seem to be pretty far out, and no cyberpunk anything is complete without some sort of holographic tech, this time in the form of a large dragon. The Yaiba Kuzanagi is shown off here with a unique V driving it throughout the Night City streets, as we pass by a new store Bayside Cache, as well as what appears to be a pod hotel. These are pretty popular in Japan with small sized rooms called capsules. You do enter what appears to be a Claws owned hotel later on with their new logo above, but it's unclear if this is actually the pod hotel. At 311, we have Westbrook's Red Light District Jig Jig Street. There are a ton of sexualized ads here, with the standout being the Midnight Lady Surprise Them Nipple Taser ad. Next, we have V unplugging a character off screen as a high tiered Arasaka or Tiger Claw agent attacks with some Thermal Mantis blades. Tiger Claws are backed by the Japanese Mega Corporation, so again, it's unclear if this person is actually from Arasaka or has just been equipped by them. Again, we see some more holographic images, this time Koi before a face-off with an aggressive claw using this thermal katana that we first saw in the Tools of Destruction trailer. He has some backup in the form of this woman wielding a bat, and this is probably our first look at Luminous Tattoos. Moving on, we have a shootout against some claws using a Gen 2 Arasaka katana. As the player collapses, we see some more unique clothing options, as well as a male hand with long nails indicating just how customizable your character can be in line with the lore of the universe. Next up, we have the Mox, a gang of sex workers and braindance aficionados. 
Moving along, we have a high traffic location in Night City featuring the Hate Your Meat Cyberware ad, a new Cirrus Cola ad, and again the Midnight Lady accessory ad. Check out the background and we see yet another familiar location. At 325, we have a scene outside the Lizzie's Bar, this time showcasing the five-some brain dance experience that the Lizzie's Bar seems to be known for. The two Mox bouncers are guarding the entrance, and in a subsequent shot again we can see a fast travel terminal. Moving into a crime scene, we have the NCPD cordoning off this segment of a back alley. I do hope the hologram recreations of crime scenes are still a thing. Back inside the Lizzie's Bar, and the most notable thing here is the Tiger Claws jacket this woman is wearing. If you remember from the Life Path trailer during the Street Kid segment, we saw something very similar. The mock seemed to have a resident Ripper Doc as well as we move on to our first look at this character, first seen in the Postcards from Night City trailer. My favorite design of a Mox member comes at 3.30 with this woman. She could possibly be a brain dance technician like Judy Alvarez based on the monitor in front of her. Speaking of Judy Alvarez, we also have her as the mock section rounds up. There is a Network News 54 feed in the background as well as the new United States seal on screen. We end off the gang's trailer with two of the Nomad factions, the Rates and the Aldecaldos. 3 minutes and 56 seconds in, we have a new ad in the background which looks similar to this Too Good To Waste ad or at the very least a variation of this. As we're intro to the rates, we see some Nomad vehicles lined up for either a race or just outside the Night City border. You can see Wraith branding on the vehicle on the left, and getting a bit closer we can see these two Wraiths chatting. The vehicle has some sort of sensor which is potentially used to detect mines out in the deserts since this is a big issue that the Nomads have to face. A very Mad Max-esque scene is next with the player shooting at Nomads as they tail your vehicle. The Badlands experience bouts of storms and inclement weather, and it's looking like these moments were stripped right out of Fury Road. The outskirts and Badlands are home to Biotechnica protein farms, and I'm guessing some weird experiments will be going on out there. Biotechnica is a fairly dodgy company, and with this much land, one of those huts is bound to house some sort of corporate or experimental secrets. We can also see the scale of the Badlands in this shot outside a Nomad trailer. Take a look into the background, and emerging from the fog, we see Night City. At 4.07, we see the Wraith hideout in the Corp Bud facility, first seen in the Weapons trailer. We will see some action sequences here later on as we bust up this faction of Nomad Outcasts. On to the Aldecaldos and we have the potential romance option from the Life Path trailer shown here carrying a hefty sniper rifle. It has a Militech scope as well as a speed addict spray on it, and this might be an iconic weapon to her just like the Chaos Pistol is to Royce. An Aldecaldos camp is shown off and here we have what appears to be another roach easter egg that we first saw on the side of a Thornton Nomad vehicle. At 414 we have the Aldecaldos techie from again the Life Path trailer Briefing V. Both Thornton and Militech logos are present on the vehicle which might mean this has been highly modded. In one of my favorite couple of scenes we have four Militech AVs shooting at presumably the player, attempting to make a getaway possibly over the border, and a similar sequence where we're being chased by nomad vehicles, one of which has a turret strapped to the roof. We end by firing off our Malorian pistol into some Militech troops at night, which we can compare with the Life Path trailer where this altercation took place during the day. Well that's all I got for you guys today, this one took quite a while so if you did enjoy it consider dropping a like or sharing it with your buddies. As always for more cyberpunk join Neon Nation by subscribing to the Neon Arcade.